Find the scalar tangential and scalar normal components of the acceleration of a particle with the given position vector with an x component of t and a y component of t squared plus 4. We should recognize that the function they gave us represents a parabola. A parabola with an equation that has an x component of t and a y component of t squared plus 4. You can see this more clearly by explicitly writing down the x and the y components of our position function. And from here, you could see that since x is equal to t, we could express y in terms of x. So we have y is equal to x squared plus 4. Let's do a sketch of our parabola. So we know that our parabola is shifted 4 units on the positive y-axis. So I'll do my scale, one, two, three, four. This will be the vertex of the parabola. And I'll just add a few more marks, one, two, three, four. This is up to eight now. And let's add some units on the x-axis. Now just doing a couple of quick points to just help me with my sketch. Our parabola is going to look something like this. And it'll have an orientation going from left to right. This parabola is described by the position vector r of t given above. Our goal is to find the scalar tangential and the scalar normal components of acceleration. And there's a couple of different ways we could do this. Remember, the acceleration of a point on a curve is given as a component that is tangent to the curve and a component that is normal to the curve at any particular point. Let's just qualitatively illustrate that. Let's look at a point on our parabola. We will say a point right here. And this point will have a velocity vector. Velocity is always tangent to our curve. And since this curve is has a curvature that is pointing to the inside of the curve, I know that the acceleration, any acceleration on this curve will be directed inward. So qualitatively, I'll just draw this as my acceleration vector. This acceleration vector, if we project the line on which the velocity lies, which again is tangent to our curve, so this line is parallel to a tangent unit vector. In projecting that line, we see that we have a component of the acceleration that is tangent to the curve. And also there is a component of the acceleration that is normal to the curve. That component of acceleration normal to the curve is parallel to a vector that is normal to the curve. Now, as we've discussed previously, the tangential component of acceleration is just given as the derivative of the speed of our curve. While the normal component of acceleration is given as the curvature of the curve, times the speed squared of the curve. We can equivalently express these components. 
using our vector multiplication. For the tangential component, that's just the dot product of the acceleration with the velocity vector over the speed of the curve, which is the magnitude of velocity. And for the normal component, that's the magnitude of the cross product between acceleration and velocity over the speed of the curve. So we get to choose how we want to solve for the tangential component and how we want to solve for the normal component. Before I decide, I want to come up with an expression for the velocity of the curve and an expression for the acceleration of the curve. The velocity of the curve is given as the derivative of the position with respect to time. This is just the derivative with respect to our parameter t of t for the x component and t squared plus 4 for the y component. So the velocity of our curve is a vector with components of 1 for the x component and 2t for the y component. The acceleration of our curve relative to the parameter of t is just the derivative of the velocity with respect to t. So this is just the derivative of the vector with components of 1 and 2t. And so this is equal to 0 for the x component and 2 for the y component. This gives us our acceleration relative to the x and y axes. But we want the acceleration relative to the curve. We want the acceleration relative to the, a vector tangent to the curve and a vector normal to the curve. Well, now that we have our expressions for acceleration and velocity, let's go ahead and apply uh, the relationship that we have using vector, mul vector multiplication for the tangential component of acceleration and the, the normal component of acceleration. So we have the tangential component of acceleration equal to the dot product of the acceleration and velocity over the speed of the curve. Well, we know what velocity is. We know what acceleration is in terms of x and y components. So let's apply the dot product to find the tangential component of acceleration. So we have the tangential component of acceleration is going to be the acceleration, the vector with components of 0, 2, dotted with the velocity vector, which has components of 1 and 2, t. And this is going to be over the magnitude of velocity. So let's quickly find the magnitude of velocity. The magnitude of velocity, or the speed of the curve, is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So the speed of the curve is equal to the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So this means the tangential component of acceleration has a square root of 1 plus 4t squared in the denominator. So when we evaluate this, this is equal to the numerator is equal to the sum of the products of the components. So this is 0 times 1 plus 2 times 2t. And in the denominator, we have the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So we now have the tangential component of acceleration is equal to 4t over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. 
This is how much the curve is accelerating in a direction that is parallel to a tangent vector on the curve at any point. Now let's find the acceleration of a component normal to the curve at any point. So we are going to say, we're going to use that the normal component of the acceleration is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of the acceleration of the velocity over the speed of the curve. So we have to find the cross product. We can evaluate the cross product between acceleration and velocity by creating a five by three matrix where the columns of this matrix correspond to the components of our vectors and the rows correspond to the vectors themselves. So the second row corresponds to the components of our acceleration vector, which are 0, 2, and 0. And the third row corresponds to the components of our velocity vector, which are 1, 2t, and 0. How we'll evaluate this matrix is by taking the product of one set of diagonals and subtracting the product from an, the opposite set of diagonals. When we do this for this matrix, we end up with minus 2k hat for the cross product between the acceleration and the velocity vectors. The magnitude of this cross product is simply equal to 2. And that's just taken by the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Now that we have the magnitude of the cross product between acceleration and velocity, we could come up with our expression for the scalar normal component of the acceleration to our curve. And that's equal to the magnitude of the acceleration and velocity cross product divided by the speed of the curve. So we have now found our expressions for the tangential component of the acceleration to our curve and the normal component to our curve of the acceleration.